All right, we are back here on the podcast covering the finale of Curb Your Enthusiasm. The series finale aired on Sunday night. And joining me, as always, he's done Curb podcast coverage in the past year. Martino Puccio is back here. Martino, how are you? I'm good, Mike. Um, bittersweet ending to one of the funniest shows to ever exist. Um, but arguably, I guess, I don't know. I haven't seen too many sitcoms. Cheers had a great series finale. Uh, ironically enough, because Ted Danson's involved with this one, but this is truly one of the best uh, sitcoms to, well, if you want to call it a sitcom, uh, to ever exist. And uh, yeah, I mean, just LD sent it off the most perfect way possible um, that we'll get into. So yeah. Yeah, for sure. Here, I mean, obviously, I've seen my share of finales. We, we could, we'll talk about the Seinfeld one a little bit, like in comparison to this one here. I met your mother did not stick the landing when I when they did that show. So this one did, in my opinion, ten out of ten from Larry David on, on the curve finale. Yeah, again, for how I met your mother fans, just go watch the alternate ending and just burn it into your brain. Uh yeah, I mean, this was this was a perfect culmination of everything that has happened over the years. Very similar to Seinfeld, even though, like you know. It was the it was a running joke basically in the entire show of Curb and and he referenced it uh, in this season as well on how he was a writer for those final seasons anyway so he had no involvement in that really um, as he likes to say but but yeah I mean again I'll let you tee it off with all, with all the stuff for it but it, it was just it was it was perfect as you could get uh, for who's around to uh, do the finale. Yeah, for sure. Let's get into this finale here in terms of the the, the big story, on obviously, is the Larry David trial for violating the Voting Integrity Act in Georgia here. It turns into basically a carbon copy of the Seinfeld finale where they're bringing all these character witnesses, talking about how terrible Larry yeah. is. We have a lot of uh, callbacks here. Larry gets found guilty in the end, just like the Seinfeld characters, but he gets out of technicality. So they did. I did love the fact that they basically, Larry had the ball say, you know what, like, you hate this finale so much. Twenty five years ago, we're doing it again. Yeah, uh, it's it's basically just that um, because it's just a raunchier and better acted out Seinfeld to an extent um, coming from the lead. Just in my opinion, it's not really much of a shot at Jerry, but Larry is just the way he carries this show, and and really, it's just him. I mean, obviously, you have other people in the main cast that have joined over the years, but it's not, you know, that foursome that Seinfeld had. It's really just Larry, uh, who is at the focal point of this. Uh, and again, Greg Kinnear showing up for it as as the attorney representing the state of Georgia, I thought was hilarious. Um, so to kind of have him in there, and I'm, oh, I'm the name is escaping me of the actress who is playing Richard's uh, girlfriend, Cynthia. Uh, she's great in uh, The West Wing. Um, it's just really, she's incredible. She was great in this. I, I loved it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, it was a great send off. It was a great send off here. In terms of the people who showed up for this trial here, we had a lot of familiar faces. We had some from this season. Obviously, we had Bruce Springsteen back. We had Irma Krakowski back. We had uh, Mr. Takahashi from the club. And we had some really fun callbacks as well. I mean, we got a uh, Lieutenant Bankman from last season. We got the grown-up actress who played the little girl Larry gives the hug to in the bathroom in like the first season. Like, who was your favorite callback? Or seen that or the clips they showed in this trial? Um, I would say my favorite callback. Well, there's actually like another callback when he's in the jail cell that I love. It's actually in the first episode of the entire show with his pants um being bunched up like that. Uh that I just thought that was very funny because that was like the first one of the first things and running gags that they had. I would say personally though, because it was the most ridiculous thing possible, uh, was the girl on the ski lift, uh, her jumping off <laughs> where when Larry just basically said, What are you nuts? Um, and she she recalls how she jumped 45 feet, which was the most ridiculous thing. And, and I was just kind of like still screaming in my head, like, how is this Larry's fault? How is this Larry's fault? Like, this is like ridiculous. This is why I'm always on his side for like so many of the things that he does. Um, for me, that was my favorite callback. And then again, obviously, just the black swan. Um, <laughs> just 
that that right there and Takahashi having so many different like issues it's just it's just so funny to me on how that entire thing played out um but yeah I would I would say those two for sure in terms of people I say Boca Joe showing up first was definitely a highlight because you know he was gonna that Severo Guerra wanted to come back so it was fun to have him air his grievances Larry over the years plus the newspaper for the beloved aunt, Miss Print, also has to be included in this in terms of a great. Oh, movie. my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That That is true. I think that one was great. It's just nobody else hearing out Larry's side. It's just on how ridiculous he is. Um, and I kind of love how the title of the episode itself, No Lessons Learned, um, is just a perfect way of, of going about it and how that little kid threw the ball at Larry's head and how he mentioned he was 76 years old and he never learned a lesson in his life. I just thought it was, I just thought it was great because the, the woman was just trying to waste Larry's time. So he just fast forwarded to the end for the kids. So that I, I thought that was just the perfect setup to what happened in the courtroom. Yeah, for sure here. And in terms of, uh, we had a lot of side plots in this episode too, I feel like classic curve side plots, whether it was, uh, Leon off screen, binging Seinfeld the entire episode until he gets the finale and says, I heard you fucked that up, Larry. Like, we can't, like, basically, you had that. We had uh, Jeff and Larry conning Auntie Ray out of her, out of her, uh, yes. dressing recipe. You had the whole thing with Richard's girlfriend basically refusing to go Larry into a lane mm-hmm. and him inquiring about how she killed, tried to kill herself. And the whole ridiculous thing about Larry not being asked not to reveal that Cheryl hates Mexican food because that's private information. So, which of those did you like the most? Um, I think, well, I think the, the airplane mode on the plane before they take off was very funny and ratting people out. I think that one was great, but it's obviously the salad dressing. It's not even close because it, here's the thing. When you go through 12 years of curb, there's been, I guess you could say three constants within the show, uh, and stuff and situations that go down, right? Like, you know, Larry is number one. He's the number one character in the entire show. And then Jeff is Jeff and Susie are so obviously right below that. Um, having them is a final time where Jeff and Larry can't do anything but tell the truth to Susie. And now they have to, you know, con Auntie Ray out of her out of her dressing recipe, which was hilarious. Um and and to just satisfy Susie and and Larry always having Jeff's back and you know. I just like how they're they're both in a foxhole together, like they always are. Um, and to me, it's just it, it is kind of sad because it's sad in the sense that it's done. Now. This has been a show that's been on the air for uh, twenty plus years. We have two of the funniest characters, and and uh, I guess you could call it a bromance at this point. And how they've always had each other's back, and they only betray the other one when it benefits them. But it's not in. A f- end, ending of a friendship kind of way. I also like to note, I wish we could have seen Vince Vaughn one more time at least uh, before that, that happened. But I think the salad dressing is, is number one. I would also say Ted Danson being a complete narcissist once again, trying to steal the spotlight was another great one because as much as I'm a big Cheers fan and I love Ted Danson, he's so fucking unbearable in the show the entire time. Like I cannot stand Ted he is the absolute worst. He never sees any flaws within himself. He only sees flaws in other people. And especially when he's supposed to be Larry's good friend, he treats Cheryl like that. Uh, or, well, he ended up with Cheryl. Like, it's just, uh, I hate Ted in the show. And I think he, he perfectly uh, embodied that. Uh, and, and that's why he did such a great job. Yeah, for sure. We got oh, also... I was surprised you see Jerry Seinfeld pop up in the actual episode because that was definitely something I was not expecting coming. I know Jerry hinted like in before, oh, we're doing the Seinfeld finale again. So I didn't think yeah. it was him showing up in this episode. I He seems more inclined to be doing things these days. Uh, obviously, he has that new movie coming out as well. So I guess making that sort of appearance. And, and on top of it, like he owes Larry. It's not that he owes Larry. It's he kind of does. He kind of owes him because of all the things that he has done. And, and it kind of, I think they kind of like reflected that in the show. Like Jerry saves his ass. He gets him out of jail, uh, which which we'll get into with the finale. But this is, you know, um, 
just the perfect thing. And, and by the way, and I know you're going to bring up potential spinoffs and stuff like that. It looked like they were setting up a spinoff for Jerry because Jerry was in these situations too in the, in the show, in the finale, where he's just like, this is ridiculous and how he's not going to be cordial and how there's so many parallels between him and Larry basically being the same fucking person. Um, and, and I love how that guy came back in there as well. Uh, and, and he's like, I can't be cordial. And, and he just walks away with that and bumps into the Joe Pesci uh, sequestering uh, c- scenario. Uh, but yeah, um, I- I'm happy that Jerry actually ended up doing that. Yeah, I think my favorite part of the whole episode with Jerry is like when he mit- runs into the guy who hires Larry for the birthday party in the first episode. And he's like, hey, can you get an appearance? Can you be cordial? And as you said, like, sorry, I can't be cordial. I just can't. And he's like, why is he get the hell out of there? It felt very Jerry. Yeah, no, no, no. It's unapologetic. Uh, I'm going to be blunt about this. Uh, stop wasting my time. I'm I'm sick of this. And uh, yeah, you just want to just walk away. It was it was good. Yeah, definitely some fun stuff here. And we definitely we got a lot of parallels of Seinfeld finality. We've been at the whole trial thing. They've been dropping wide by it all season. Like Ted Dan at one point tells Larry, like, yeah, you really screwed up the finale, didn't you? And we had the Leon lines like, yeah, I heard you fucked that up, Larry. And then at the end, it's so funny because he's in the trial. He's doing the exact same thing he did in the Seinfeld finale where he's called back something from the first episode where they were doing the button with George and Larry on the shirt, George and Jerry on the shirt. This time he's looking at the tongue of the pants tent. And then Jerry shows up. like, oh, you're out of technicality. The juror didn't sequester. The whole mistrial gets thrown out. I was dying so hard. And they're like, we should have done this 26 years ago. It's just like the, the fact that the joke came back so, like, so mad. It was so great. But yeah, isn't that just like, the perfect swan song for and and again if people saw the clip of richard lewis talking about well saying his thanks um in that final scene when they're on the airplane um about how larry is the greatest sitcom writer of the past two centuries which is just in itself a hilarious comment but but it's just true though like it's just i don't want to get emotional about it but larry is 76 years old it's one of the funniest shows I've ever seen. Um, I think they do such a great job of uh, breaking down situational comedy in a way that no one else ever can do. And it's always full circle. And it's really hard to tie that into story writing and storytelling. Um, to just do it so flawlessly, like he's got the formula down that no one will ever replicate. I'm, I'm sure you could try to do it. But it's this is this is incredible because this is a guy that not can only write these episodes to the most perfect level he acts them out he did he's done everything and he's done it better than almost anyone ever has and and yeah i mean just it's it's just great yeah i also do love where we leave the characters off as well here it feels like the way that the here's them arguing on the airplane like everybody's arguing over susie opening the white the the lampshade the the, uh, the, the side pile too much so just getting to hear them all arguing each other with Richard Lewis there, Leon there, Ted and Cheryl there. It's nice. It's nice. Our gives you the sense like, yeah, like they're still going to be like, you know, doing like wacky things in their lives. And Susan's still at dinner parties and like Larry or for whatever reason, you know, she probably shouldn't. And nice to know that they're just still hanging out doing like ridiculous things in the background of like LA somewhere. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the perfect send off. They're all together, you know, like Jeff has to put up with Susie's bullshit in the window. And then Ted is just so self involved in himself. And Cheryl's just there not seeing the flaws in Ted, but she saw them in Larry. Uh, And it was kind of an interesting con. Obviously, the show's over. It doesn't really matter. But just on how, um, you know, when Larry had to ask if Cheryl was okay. I think that moment between him and Cheryl on like how, despite Larry is a terrible husband and all these different things, he still listens and remembers everything about her. And so I thought that was kind of nice as well. Um, I thought Ted was hilarious again when Richard, there's just, it's the, it's the funniest thing on like how it's just full blown into, he was actually genuinely upset for so many different seasons, right? about how like Larry's ruining his relationships and, and and Richard is just so unironically incapable of of showing how shallow or realizing how shallow he is as a person um that he still even to the final episode is pushing and trying to find love for himself I thought the fun, the funniest comment about how he wanted kids was just I lost my shit I thought it was the funniest thing <laughs> <laughs> because he's like, you want kids? And because, and again, if anybody knows how they shoot the show, um, 
almost every single time the scenes with with Richard are improvised. So anytime you see that laugh from Larry, those back and forths are, are genuine improvisation from Richard and Larry themselves, where Larry is also just laughing because it's such a ridiculous thing. And it's it's still, it's it's very dry humor for Richard because Richard in the earlier seasons was just, he had so much more energy, obviously, because he was that much younger. But, but the fact that Richard still kept going with it, um, you know, it, it's great and it's bittersweet because of uh, his passing. Yeah, I'm glad he got a moment in the last episode because obviously aside from like, the main cast, like, he's probably the most notable guest star on the show. So it's glad he was there at the end. And the sequence when he and like Larry are to arguing about whether you should have kids and like Larry says, you should just adopt a 40 year old, like a doctor or a lawyer. And that got me like in stitches. Yeah, it's just, it was the best one. And I love how he's like, no, she's joining me for lunch right now. He's like, no, she's outside. Like yeah. that's it, it. It's also funny because they're never ending up in relationships again, and it's really just Richard and Larry, the, like the best of friends, and they're just you know like how he mentions he's like yeah he tells me everything like they're a couple you know like it's just it's just very funny how that goes out, and it also just reminds me of uh, obviously uh, oh my god Richard Kind's character in the show as well. And how him and his wife have to share everything, even though Larry asked for like them to do that in confidence. Is true. It just reminded me of that. So yeah, yeah. And I and we had you mentioned Larry's relationship. I mean, Larry at one point I think there was it like two seasons ago that they totally put him back together with Cheryl and Cy and not. I think they ended up working out for the show to have him them not be together again. I I kind of part of me just wanted that. I think that's just a selfish thing, I guess. Um, I wanted them to get back together because. In the end, Larry might be flawed, but like, how much better is Ted Danson really? And I, I think they highlighted it perfectly because Larry's actually getting arrested because he was doing a good thing as a decent person, something that Ted would never even consider himself, right? And Cheryl left him because, because she thought of who Larry was as as himself as this selfish, self absorbed type of person. Um, when in reality, Larry has his values and would actually go to jail for it and didn't actually care because he thought the law was stupid in itself and it's just he just so happened to stumble upon that situation because he was actually giving water to somebody that he knew whereas ted is just there for himself for his image um which is everything that larry isn't um he he couldn't try harder to be not involved in that um so yeah i i do wish he would have gotten back with cheryl i think he kind of like Again, with that conversation with her, like, are you okay? Actual cause for concern. Like for, for Ted, like he's kind of feeding into like Cheryl having like these issues with the Mexican food. Like who gives you shit? Larry's right about that. Who cares? Yeah. Everybody is right about it. No one actually cares. Uh, for some reason, only Cheryl does. And then like, you know, Ted just kind of feeds into that of like, why, why would you do that to like Cheryl? Like he knows and cares. Um, he's just so self-absorbed. It's just... Ted plays it so well, though. That's why he's a legend himself. Yeah, Ted was funny. I say, like, when Larry calls him out, it's like, oh, you're here for yourself. Like, you're here to get, meet yourself headlines here. And then they do the shower, gets arrested. And he's like waving the crowd in handcuffs. Like, that was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he's just like talking, yeah. uh, just just the whole thing. He's like, wait, don't do that. Don't touch my hair when he's getting put into the, <laughs> the back of the cop car. It's just all stuff like that. Yeah, in terms of uh, here, the season 12 as a whole here, we can talk about yeah. here. Like, it, the jet, like the loose plot thread was sort of the trial sort of going on in the background, like him getting ready for him, screwing up his chance to get out of the trial several ways, like insulting attorneys, doing stupid things, like fighting over like whether they should name the kid, like I think it was a speedball, like like uh, something ridiculous for his, his previous attorney here. Like I do think this felt more like season one. There was a bunch of like sort of like Ram and Larry's life, and there's a very loose through line, as opposed to like last year was young Larry or two years ago was a spice store. I feel like it was interesting to see where this is sort of a throwback to season one in a sense yeah i mean just going back to your roots and there's so much to tie up because in reality there's 11 seasons of this show and a lot went down and a lot happened and you have 10 episodes to kind of wrap it up some you know like in the 45 minute range and this finale was close to an hour the reality is is that um chaos rules in the curb world and 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 there's just so much that goes on that happens in Larry's life. Um, and you got everything. You got the music, you got the the 
the traditional not traditional characters just just you know like the original characters him getting into these situations him not believing people who are blatantly lying and and just the eye squint and, and the flute playing or whatever the instrument is uh it's just classic and and to tie it into you know everything being summed up like you know larry might be an asshole but in reality his intentions were always decent and and I think that just kind of sums Larry up himself, and and I think he deserved to get off. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So in terms of season, the season, where would you put it in the rankings of the seasons? Uh, season twelve, where'd you put it's, it on the it's list? It's so hard. It's so hard. There's so many good ones. Um, and again, I've kind of rewatched the earlier seasons because I've rewatched with friends who have never seen the show, so I've I've gotten them into it. Let's let's do I, let's, let's do a list right now. Let's, let's do, we'll, yeah. we'll loose list, Russell. We'll sort of the themes here. Season one is sort of the what we talk about here is it's like we're introduced to all the characters, a bunch of random shenanig random act like shenanigans happening here. We got stuff like the pants tent, we got beloved ants. I would say I would say like it's it's okay. So like when they rebooted the show again, right? I guess we could say that because they took time off for a while. Yeah, um like a it was the best of the newer seasons. Yeah, you like the best of the newer seasons, so like better than I think so. The Spike Store season. I think it was the I think it was the best prior to that. I, I I think so. I love the Mocha Joe season. I think that, that one was great. Um, last season with young Larry, it was kind of to me. I mean, it was still good. Like like the worst of Curb is still one of the funniest shows. I just think that uh, this guy is just so great. I think season 12 was just the perfect culmination because you were just wondering what's going to happen. Um, and then again, it's just, it's just, it's just the best for so many reasons because you get kind of that stuff back in in the sense of hey you know like larry's like past is going to catch up to him so i think that they had that working for them which other seasons can't really have right because it's not the final season so there's not loose ends that needed to be tied up um but i would say it's one of the better ones you can't deny like any time when when uh uh leon's family comes in after katrina like those seasons are like genuinely some of the best um obviously season one just had so many great moments the producer season was fantastic as well i still prefer this one um but yeah it's just there's so many different things and in, in seasons where they're all-time episodes and it's just hard to pick you can't go wrong so like if anyone has a preference out there that's that's yours and and I, it's hard to argue against it because there's so many iconic episodes uh, within each season. It feels like. Yeah, I think for me this is top half. I feel like obviously I, I like yeah. the Seinfeld reunion season. I think is higher. Producers, I feel like is higher. The restaurant season where they're Ted and Larry and Bunkhouse are all trying to own the restaurant. I think is underrated here. Season five yeah. all was pretty good. I think like it's in that next tier after those seasons. I feel like it's better than eight. I feel like it's it's probably better than all the new seasons. So. I think it's like I think it's probably like top like top five or top six. I think I think New York still were incredible seasons. Yeah. Anything they do with Buckner, um, uh, uh, Rosie O'Donnell, the Michael J. Fox episodes, like there's so many good ones in New York that I I think kind of get glossed over because the show is primarily in L.A. So yeah, um, I think I think top half would just be the easiest way to say it, right? Because there's yeah. twelve year uh, seasons. Yeah, I think it's the top half. For me, season seven is still number one because just because the absurdity of them saying we got to redo the Seinfeld finale, then them doing it again, and then ironically them doing the Seinfeld finale over again in season twelve was great. Mm. Great. Yeah. All right. Uh, here, in terms of uh, where would you want to put this? Let's see. We have potential here for. Would you want any sort of spinoff of Curb? And sometimes I know JV Smooth has said probably that, hey, like, mm -hmm. there's no idea what Leon was up to before he showed up at Larry's house. I'd love to see a sort of prequel about what Leon was up to. Like, you, you mentioned the idea of, like, do we get Jerry back involved and do some sort of modern ish take on Seinfeld again? Like, would you want to see any sort of Curb spinoff? I, I don't think you do a Curb spinoff in general. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with like these actors and these characters. Like, I, I will say that, but I don't know. Forcing a Leon thing, it just, it, it just, I don't think there's enough there for it. I think him with Larry is what makes him great. Leon on his own is, it's, to me, I, I don't, I, I love Leon. He's great. 
but I don't think he's that kind of lead character. He's always great because he's he's a great you know side character. He's I don't I don't think he's someone that could carry a show. That's my personal opinion on it. Um, and then again with Jerry, I think Jerry could perfectly fit the mold if he wanted to. But there's like a like 05 percent chance Larry uh, Jerry Seinfeld's getting back into television in that capacity. I'd be very surprised if he did. I'd be over the moon because I think he could actually kind of pull it off if he's just more, but he's not that raunchy type of comedian. Like he's very well known for not cursing, not, not getting to the level that Larry did. Right. So I don't know, but he surprised me. I love that version of Jerry that we saw in the finale. I wish we could see more of that. If that would ever have happened. Yeah. I think like I could see more that like, Maybe, you know, Jerry's been acting more of late. Like, he's doing more projects. I know he's like, he's not doing anything apart from stand-up comedy. So, I wouldn't surprise... I think in five years or more likely is to see Jerry getting itched, you know, do, like, a one-season Seinfeld follow-up than to get any sort of curve follow-up with Leon. Yeah. Uh, I think it ultimately comes down to them. I think Leon, like, it's just... It's just a whole new thing. And then if you're talking about like what life was like prior to that, like it's just he's old, bro. <laughs> like, what are you how are you gonna work this out? Like, how's it gonna work logistically? Like he's just gonna make Leon look old and the same uh, back then. I don't know. It's just uh, I I don't know. I think I think when some things are so great, you just leave it as is. Yeah, for sure here. So obviously wrap up your last day here. Give me your your take, legacy of this show in terms of like what it means or like the, the sitcom world, because this is like far away the most unique thing that's come out the last like 25 years. I think it's one of the five funniest shows to ever exist. Um, I prefer it over Seinfeld. I prefer it over a lot of the show. I'm a big Always Sunny in Philadelphia fan. So to me, that show is just as funny as anything that's ever been. But just how Larry has the capability of writing and acting this out um, and perfectly tying together stories on a consistent basis for so long. Whereas shows that have sitcoms and, and you've seen plenty of them, they drop off at certain points. I don't think Curb ever had that drop off. They perfectly knew what they had. And if they were capable of having another season, they would make sure that they would do it in in a way that makes it quality and not just trying to force something out there right and i think that's what makes uh, larry so admirable about it um again he is all intense purposes and and again shout out to i guess nicks and rangers fans like yourself that got more of more sports stakes there um i think i think it's one of the three funniest shows that ever existed uh and, and you're not going to get me to to argue otherwise it's just we're talking about a show that spanned over 20 years that is really difficult to do um and and to maintain the hilarity of it all over that course of time it's unparalleled it's unmatched it's it's never going to be rivaled uh because larry himself is one of the most unique comedians to ever exist um because you could be a great writer like a Judd Apatow. And this is, again, this is not a shot at Judd Apatow and guys like this who are great writers. But to be able to be a great writer and transition later in life to also be a hilarious comedy actor, it is so special and unique to pull that off and quite literally do it better than you did before. And the funniest part is, is that Seinfeld is the biggest hit sitcom to ever exist. And he somehow managed to do it better. And that in itself is just the legacy of the show is that Larry David is an iconic comedic, uh, comedic genius. And I don't think there's been anyone like him and there never will be ever again. Yeah, that's for sure. One thing I for forgot from the finale I wanted to bring up here was great. And I don't, I'm sure you saw on social media, I think before the finale that, uh, LD was at a Nick game sitting courtside with Susie. Yeah, with Susie. Yeah. And he tries to terribly do the heart thing with his hands. It's funny because that really is something that happens in the finale when he and Susie are pulling the scam where like Susie's pretending to be like this uh like handicapped woman that Larry saved from a vehicle. He's trying to do the do the heart thing with his hands on the stand and he can't do it. But that was hilarious. 
Yeah, no, ex- exactly. I just, um, there were so many funny jokes from that about like how people were just like, oh, Larry putting up like gang signs in Atlanta and stuff like that, where he's accidentally doing those sort of things. Um, but yeah, um, I-, I also love just like a final thing on a note. I just love how um, him and Susie Essman, and, and again, there's that Curb podcast that her and, and Jeff Garland do together where they kind of like just discuss the show and how things were made and how things were and how it changed their lives, you know, because they're like Susie Essman is a comedian herself. So like, you know, if you know anything about her, like she doesn't have much outside of Curb. So like the way Larry is able to help elevate so many of his friends. And if you recall earlier in the seasons, like he shows like, footage of Richard Lewis and how good of a comedian he was and, and stuff like that. Um, again, even Martin short being on the show um, earlier too, when he started doing his, uh, uh, the name is escaping me of the character that he does in the interviews, but just, he pays homage to so many of his friends and he doesn't forget where he comes from. I just think that kind of stuff to me is great. Absolutely. Martino. Thanks for all the time. Really appreciate it. If you want to follow you on social media, how can I do that? Yeah, uh, at Martino Puccio. Um, I was so close to getting this season finale correct. I, I was I was kind of right on a level, but um, Larry going to jail and finishing this show off um, it's great. It's going to be bittersweet to never really kind of discuss this again with you on the podcast. But, um, you know, uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, at Martino Puccio everywhere, uh, YouTube, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Yeah, I'll say, though, if this... If our my prediction is right, then in five years, Jerry says, you know, I want to do a 10 season episode, 10 episode season of Seinfeld, of Seinfeld to sort of reset where everybody is like 30 years after the show ended. Like that's something I would definitely talk about. Uh, I'd love that as well. Yeah, for sure.